Welcome to the Beyond. Was, whoa, 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 whoa. It was my turn. Go ahead. Welcome to the Beyond Jiu Jitsu podcast. I'm your co host, Adam Childs, with my main man, Kieran Lefebvre. What is up? With your main host, Kieran. Main co-host, host, Kieran Lefebvre. Co host, Adam. Wait, what did, I, guest what did host. I say? Did I say co host or main host? You said, I- you said you're a co host, and I'm saying I'm the main host. All oh, right. You're the temporary guest host? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, yeah, you're the permanent guest. <laughs> <laughs> How are you, dude? Yeah, not too bad. Not too bad. I'm feeling a lot better. Feeling a lot better today. I yeah, was saying last we we were last recording week. an episode the other day, whenever it was, and mm. and uh, it was a Tuesday on the day, and you were already a bit shattered from Monday's training. Yeah. But you had had a rough week previously in terms yeah. of this, like you had done a whole lot of like a really hard training week and didn't fully yeah. recover. Yeah. Feeling a bit better today? Yeah, feeling a bit better. I've uh, spent a lot of time on the foam roller, doing some mobility, doing some cold water therapy. Oh yeah, some uh, I've, contrast showers. I've, I've not gone back to a cold shower yet. Yeah, fair enough. You know what? But every time I like, it's still almost. So I mean, what episode was that? The the cold shower one was Recovery, not that I think long 28 ago. Twenty eight or something like that. Somewhere around that. Uh, hang on, bear with me, guys. I've updated the spreadsheet. Wait. So we are at episode forty one. So yeah, today's episode forty one. I'm having to. Episode like thirty two. Thirty two. Okay. Was uh, was cold. And that was therapy. weeks ago. Recover- yeah, recovery <laughs> tactics for BJJ. But cold not for us. Suck. Yeah, yeah, that's right. <laughs> um, you know, but I still. When I just have like a regular shower, yeah. um, it's almost like oh, it just doesn't feel right being Yeah, warm. something wrong. I kind of miss the cold shower. Maybe I'll have one get today. Around it. Get around it. So I probably won't when I get to it. My new thing is pretty much, I don't know why, but it just has worked out that way. Every Tuesday, I have a um, like a Epsom salt, magnesium salt bath for about 20 minutes, as hot as I can stand it, as hot as I can get it. And then I have a five minute cold shower after that. And it works gangbusters. And that's yeah, what I nice. did last night. And one of yeah. um one of our listeners oh god I've uh, let me see if I can bring up his name on Instagram so I can give him a shout out I think he actually directly messaged me on on my Instagram not on the Beyond Jiu Jitsu Instagram hang on about uh, uh, we need Jeopardy music Harry Harry's his name uh, yeah Harry obviously listened to that episode and uh, sent me through a, a video slash photo of you know those inflatable yeah he sent that to me too oh, he sent it to H- you as well. yeah so Harry yeah. Harry um, trained with me at bulletproof for BJJ right yeah, right okay. yeah shout have out to I, Harry have I met Harry in person uh, I'm not sure if you have but Harry shout out to Harry uh, thanks for legend. listening Harry but yeah he um hang on yeah so we sent uh, like, I don't I might have met him. Hmm once but yeah i didn't do bulletproof with him yeah yeah, but yeah he, he sent through JT. those those inflatable uh i guess because they're inflatable they're semi portable yeah. or at least more uh space i reckon we should, we should look at getting one i know fabricio who we had on on episode 37 yeah. uh fab who owns alliance northern beaches mm. i know he has one i saw an ah. instagram photo of his ages ago where he'd actually like uh blown it up and was having an ice bath like on the beach, oh, like that's looking sick. out over the water. I, was, I uh, think know. I've seen that. Yeah, yeah. If you don't know Fab, definitely listen to that episode. Uh, he's absolute weapon owner of Alliance Northern, Northern Beaches. Beaches. Yeah, in the north of Sydney. Yeah. But yeah, I don't know how much they go for, those inflatable ones. But yeah. you know the- Do you want to get one? Look, man, I'll get one <laughs> just because. Yeah. You know, it's actually not- We'll the, put it at the gym. Yeah. Uh, man, look, I would keep one at the gym. It's not even the the thing that stops me from having ice, ice baths is not- the pain of it, you know, because I actually find it less painful than a cold shower because yeah. you're fully in the water. Yeah, to, yeah, you know, it's, and it's better for you. Yeah, uh, and it's not even the the storage, even though our gym doesn't have a huge amount of space. It's not like it's not the space; it's mm. just the logistics of oh Getting man, I've got to go buy bags of ice and yeah, you know. And I mean, look, it's not a huge cost, but it adds up. It does. I oh, I dude, it's expensive. I mean, bags I, of ice are like four bucks. Yeah, I was about to say. And you need say, at I, least three or four of them. I was about know? to say, I haven't bought a bag of ice. That's like nearly $20. Long. Yeah, just for like, just I don't know how know. many bodies you can get in there oh, before man. Yeah, it's you would, not at temperature anymore. I don't know, if, like two if we or did three it, or something. It would have to be BYO ice. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, we could do that, right? We could, yeah. Oh, man, the sort of students I have, there'd be a few people just rocking up with eskies full of beers. Yeah, yeah, yeah I was about to, say, yeah, like, was no. about to say, the sort of students that, that you have probably- Is that a universal uh, 
initialism, BYO? Yeah, 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 BYO. Bring your okay. own. Yeah, bring your own for those that bring don't know. Bring your own. Bring your own. Yep. It's referring to alcohol generally, but BYO, ice. Okay, so today we are getting into a bit of a, uh, a niche topic, but we're going to uh, rein it in with uh, some applicable stuff that – now, I'm going to be honest. The reason that I want this in is because this this – portion of the topic is applies to, you. Applies to me. <laughs> <laughs> so selfish, selfish. So we're talking about uh, moving cities to train jujitsu, moving cities to uh, pursue jujitsu. Yep. And I know there are a lot of people out there that have done this, would consider doing it, or maybe it's a fantasy of theirs or, or what have you. And uh, I also wanted to sneak in there how to go about training on a holiday, whether you should do it, uh, how to do it logistically, uh, the the courtesies, the, you know, I don't know, niceties around it. So let's get stuck in. First of all, Ads, you've moved cities to train. I moved countries, bro. Yeah. yeah. Well, like shit. Move, move cities, countries, gyms or whatever to train. Mm. I, I mean, I, the short answer is I think, yeah, you should, you know. Uh, but then obviously, what are you wanting to get out of jujitsu? Yeah. Oh, you're a hobbyist? No, don't move to train, right? Why? Like it's so much effort. Why mm. would you? But for me, I always approached jujitsu like my university and I, I always sort of explain it like this. You know, for me, it was no different to people who, if you want to study, I don't know, whatever it is, like IT or, you know, uh, medicine Mm. Your law at Harvard, law, yeah. whatever. You're probably going to move wherever is the highest ranked university that you get into. Exactly right. Like you know, in America, it's always like Harvard is like the, I don't know if gold standard is the right word, but it's like the like the elite. Yeah. What do they call them? Ivy League. Schools, yeah, Ivy League right? or like Oxford in uh, in the states. Yeah. Uh, sorry, in the UK. Yeah, you know so. Uh, if you got into Harvard, you would move. Even yeah. if I don't even know what state or city Harvard is in. Right? Yeah, My, yeah, they don't really teach a lot of US geography in Australia. Yeah. Uh, you know, and there's like 51 states, right? Yeah. And even Americans don't necessarily know all the states. So like how am I supposed Virginia. to Virginia. Yeah. <laughs> so when you move into Virginia to go to Harvard. Yeah. So, uh, you know, if you, you would, even if you didn't, like the city or the part of the country, like if you if you wanted to be a top notch lawyer and you got into Harvard Law, mm. like you would move, right? Yeah. And luckily, jujitsu doesn't require you to pass an exam to get in. You kind of just got to pay your membership fees. Mm. So if you're wanting to pursue it as your career, I'm not saying it can't be done. You know, air quotes at home. For sure it could, but if you have the means to move to what is one of the best gyms, teams, instructors in the world, man, I don't see why you wouldn't, you know, if, if you're if willing you're, to, sorry, go on. I was, I was just saying like, when you're saying you don't see why you wouldn't in your position, just to clarify for those that haven't uh, listened to your origin story episode, which was way back in like episode three. Oh God, three. well, I've got a spreadsheet, bro. <laughs> I, was, I think it was Hang episode on. three that we spoke about. Uh, your, you know, journey, episode six, episode six, my apologies, Close. uh, where you spoke about your journey to black belt, which, which saw you move to Sao Paulo in Brazil to yeah. the Alliance headquarters, which at the time it still is considered one of the best teams in the world, uh, was the best team in the yeah, world. Like for, for any newer listeners, like back when I moved there, what today in 2021 people think is like, well, I could obviously now the Danaher Death Squad is split into the B team and yeah. whatever. What New Wave Jiu-Jitsu. New Wave Jiu-Jitsu. But, I mean, let's just go back a few months. Mm. Back when I moved to Sao Paulo, the Alliance headquarters in Sao Paulo was looked at the same way that people in 2021 look at the Danaher, Danaher Death, Death Squad. Squad. Yeah, like it that was makes sense. The, the gym, the team to be training place with, to be. you know. So yeah. uh, you can – one of the things that when Lachlan Giles out of Absolute MMA in Melbourne, you know, blew up by not only being the coach of Craig Jones but also his huge success at the last ADCC, you know, he kind of went on to say, to say like to prove that, you know, he publicly said like, see, you don't need to move to to be – successful and and that's true don't get me wrong that's true but but then again i would counter argue that like obviously i know absolutely nothing compared to lachlan 
But then you'll see in Australia, lots of people moved to train with him. So That's he's, right. he's yeah. sort of and saying you don't need to move, but he's a little bit of an anomaly in that sense. Well, yeah, I w- yeah, my the little sort of asterisks that I would put to that. He doesn't have to move. The point, yeah, <laughs> yeah, but it's also even then it's you know Lockie's travelled internationally multiple times, yeah. a lot of the time to compete, but also just to train. Yeah, you know, or he's combined the trips. You know, I mean, Lockie and I first met where. He visited my gym in Brazil. Yeah. Right. I mean, he was already a black belt at the time. I was a blue or purple belt. And I can't really remember. You know, that's when I first met Lockie and yeah. his wife, Livia, when they were traveling and they were traveling to compete, but they stayed a good chunk of time to, to train as well. Nice. So yeah, he didn't move to, to train, but he traveled a lot to train. And obviously, you know, this episode may be, irrelevant in one or two decades when Australia is stacked with multiple world champions, you know, you might think, I mean, you could, yeah, you could still move Hopefully. cities, but imagine if, if Adelaide, Melbourne, Sydney, like all the main cities in Australia have all got multiple world champion gyms or, or world champion instructors, you know, it's going to be less of a relevant argument, but I would say at the moment in 2021, 2022, all the top, Australian competitors and the top up and coming Australian competitors. So the current top competitors are, you know, uh, Lockie had his big success, you know, who's traveled a lot mm. to compete and train Craig, who, who has, you know, who's pretty much lived in the U S for the past, you know, since he was a Brown belt pretty yeah. much uh, Levi who, who trains all the time in New York with unity. And then you have even some of the, Lower Isaac uh, Mitchell. Sorry, Isaac Mitchell now just now one Nogi Worlds. One Nogi belt. Worlds training with Craig yeah. in Austin. Uh Jeremy Paul Skinner, who has not made the move over yet to train and live internationally, but we spoke about it when he was on episode uh thirty one. Thirty one was it that we had Jeremy on? I yeah, so. J- thirty one we had Jeremy on. Uh, even some of the lower belts. So in Australia, oh God, I can't believe I'm about to mention him on the podcast. But uh, little Varun, if you're an Australian jiu-jitsu person, you maybe know who Varun is. He's a blue belt here in in Sydney, and he's a funny dude. He's a funny kid. Uh, that's all I'll say about Varun. Uh, incredibly talented little blue belt man, and but he's I think he's in New York at the moment again, training with Unity because he's kind of under Levi, I believe. So you know, at the moment all the top Australian competitors are still doing a good chunk of time internationally, you know, Mm -hmm. to train. Yeah. So the, as a whole, the country isn't, the level isn't there yet by like a few, there's always going to be exceptions, exceptions to the rule. You know, it's kind of like when people say, Oh man, like uh, Bill Gates didn't finish university, so why do I? And it's like yeah, you, Bill ne- Gates, bro. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You, it's like, well, neither did that dude collecting bottles off yeah. the street to like make a few coins. You know, he didn't finish university either. You know, just because one or, or a couple of people, I don't want to say get away with something, but they're an exception to the rule. Yeah, doesn't mean the rule is irrelevant. Yeah, I agree. Would, would, do you want to move cities? What do you reckon? How do why you would feel I? Why would I move? I have the best instructor yeah, in the world. Got me, bro. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. It, again, yeah. It depends what you want Look, out of it. I, I don't, was. I, don't I was. Move. I'm more interested. Sorry to cut you off. Then I just want to actually take your question seriously. Um, I mean, shit. The the as you would know, as time progresses, I'm taking jujitsu. Believe it a lot. Uh, believe it or not, even more seriously. Like more and more seriously as time time goes on. Uh, and I mean, I've got aspirations in competition. I've got aspirations in business and all sorts of media. You know, I've got my buddy, even this podcast, right. Is a, is a testament to my dedication already. So I kind of feel like I'm not following in your footsteps, but I feel like, um, your story resonates with me because, you know, you were saying like you identified as a white belt, that this is something that you seriously want to pursue. Now I'm like really getting to that stage where I'm like assessing things like, okay, like, you know, what are my goals? What are my life goals? And where does jujitsu fit into that picture? Yep. And as yep. time progresses, how can I incorporate that into exactly. me? Like you know, you can you can debate whether money is an issue, oh, but like at the end of the day, you got to pay of bills, course. right? Of so you're like, how issue. how can jujitsu fit into yep. my ability to live a life? Yeah, live a life, and and what do I want to get out of it financially, and and everything like that. So you know, as the, as time progresses, it's becoming more a, a larger and larger part of that picture. 
if that makes sense. So, of course, I've thought about it because, you know, following in your footsteps, if you will, you know, you moved to Brazil. It was the Harvard of, of Jiu-Jitsu at the time. So I'm looking, okay, so if this is something that I want to do. Would I move to Austin or would I move to Brazil or yeah. would I, you know, what have you. But I think the more I look at it, the more I'm sort of leaning more towards uh, Lachlan Giles' approach where he's saying, like, you don't have to move. I think it would be a greater achievement to – create an environment or be part of, I wouldn't say create because I'm not creating, you are, but be a part of a team and an environment that has success internationally or has success in other domains in jiu-jitsu. Yeah. Well, like I think it, that's a bigger achievement than moving well, to whatever city already has that success. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, in the last episode, like, you know, episode 40 was – another ask a black belt and Anthony sent in a question asking what were, were my plans for, for the gym and stuff. And, mm. you know, we didn't go into too much detail, but I essentially said, look, I'm wanting to create the, I want my gym to be the best, most successful gym in Sydney, you know, in Australia. I want it to be like the named gym yeah. in, in Sydney. And yeah. So I guess what you're saying is, you know, you could be a part of that, right? Yeah. Uh, you know, I, you can still do, I think what you could do that, right, though, is is similar to what Lockie did. You know, you can still mm. travel and train yeah, which at is different what I gyms, do. you yeah. know. Uh, I don't speak with Lockie as often as as, as I would like to, but but we're, we're good friends. And even the other day, my wife and I were talking and she was like, oh, you know, because my wife doesn't train jiu-jitsu. So she's like, oh, how do you – go about like progressing your jujitsu. And a lot of it is just self-study and the same way that anyone in a, in a top of their field, yeah, the right? top of yeah. their field or whatever, they do a lot of it on their own. If you yeah. looked at a high level physicist or, or someone in theoretical physics, uh, physics, they're trying to solve the problems and stuff. Yeah, themselves, and they collaborate right? more yeah. than, you know, yeah, that's right. But you know, there's obviously still always things to learn. And she was talking about like, Oh, maybe we should look at trying to fit into into our schedule because obviously I have a wife and a kids and a business to run, but like, you know, or oh, every whatever, every three months or something, you go stay a week in Melbourne, you know, because for me, that's who I would want to, if I was going to travel, I'm not really in a position to travel internationally as much anymore, mm. nor do I want to, right? Like, yeah. I've yeah, got my business and my family and everything, but, you know, going to Melbourne, I could train with Lockie like every few months or something would be really cool, you know, so – there's still, you know, we got. I've got one of my students who's up in Byron at the mo moment, uh, which is where Talis and Suwadi's teachers training with him. You know, a lot to learn from a lot of different people. So, you know, because not any one person knows everything, right? And so, I still think there's a lot of value in moving to train with other people, even if you are already like training at the Denaher Death Squad or whoever, like with, with. Lockie in Melbourne or you're training with Craig in Austin or you're training with Lucas Lepre in Charlotte or wherever you're there's still so much to learn from other people right and training at other gyms and we've got Mikey Musumeshi the dude's had like five different teams that he's trained at right so I'm a I definitely think traveling to train or moving is definitely valuable but it really depends what you want out of it if you're anything short of jiu-jitsu being part of your career, I don't think it's worth it, right? Like unless you're a trust fund baby with, you know, you're money. To, yeah. yeah, man, like it's it's a logistical nightmare. It's financially very difficult. Like, man, I lived in Brazil for five years and I in that five years I didn't even save enough money to buy tickets home, right? <laughs> like and, and that's not because I – wasted money it's just like the money to spend you know, it's an expensive city i didn't earn much money paying to train paying to compete like you know it's it's very difficult to move cities let alone to move countries you know if you're but for me it was worth it because i was pursuing a career you know the same way a lot of uni students live off ramen noodles for four about years yeah. right because they yeah. have their goals and their dreams yeah but i mean man would i move cities just to casually learn a little like digital marketing course on the side like no like unless I'm like I'm not going to uproot my life and move to go to this top digital marketing school to learn this 
little side hobby that I do? Mm. No, right? Why? Why would I do that? Because yeah. it's very, very hard to move yeah. cities and countries. I, it really is, man. So It's kind of sure. like having a hobby like golf, right? And then it's like, oh, would you move cities to the best golf course in the world? Like, no, why, yeah. why the fuck would you do that? Yeah. You, you would visit, but why would you, you know, if you're really keen, you had the money for it and it was, you know, really important to you. But, but why would you move for a hobby? Yeah, I mean, I guess a, it's not the perfect analogy. And, you know, I strive for the perfect analogy. I was analogy, about to say, right? what is this? <laughs> who, who is this person? <laughs> it's not the perfect analogy, but it's kind of like, you know, if you wanted to become a professional surfer and you lived in Bondi, right? Bondi Beach, one of the most famous beaches in the world one of the worst surf breaks in the world. Like mm -hmm. the surf at Bondi Beach is terrible. Mm. There's a few closer beaches that it's okay, but, you know, it's not world champion level surf. Mm. Anywhere like in the city of Sydney, really, yeah. you have to go That's further. That's why the beaches are so popular because they're so accessible to everyone. Yeah, there's you have no, to go further no north yeah. or south. So like, you know, if you lived in Bondi, the, there's no way you're becoming a world champion surfer without traveling to get to better surf, mm. right? And if you wanted to, you wouldn't be surprised to hear uh, someone who lived and grew up in Bondi, Sydney, wanting to become a world champion surfer. And then like, they're like, oh, they've moved to, you know, they've moved to WA. WA yeah. has really, you know, famous surf breaks. Or they've moved to wherever or they've... They yeah, spent three months of the year in Hawaii or... Yeah, you know, or something, the right? Big, the big you, breaks. You're going to have yeah. to, you know. It's similar in jiu-jitsu. You kind of have to go and to be able to be side by side with the best people mm. in the world to so you can get elevated to that level. Mm. Yeah, that makes sense. Right? But, yeah, I think, you know, no, I don't think. I believe I, I strongly discourage you to move if it's not going to be your career. Way too hard, bro. Way and too what's hard. What's the point? Like, it, it doesn't make sense. Just to for me. the lols. Yeah, like, <laughs> no, I see. I see that. Um, a, a perfect example is the B team, right? They've recently set up shop in Austin, Texas, and there are a lot of fanboys online that you know, half of it's joking, but you know, there's probably a portion of them that are serious. They're like, oh, let's move to Austin because you know, mm. now it's accessible. Maybe they're fuck, maybe they are in Texas, maybe they live in Houston or something and they want to move there just for, for their hobby. And then, you know, there's rightly so, there's a lot of comments on the same threads, like I'm talking Reddit, YouTube, et cetera, that are, you know, condemning that and saying like, why in the hell would you move for a hobby? Are you insane? And they have a point. So if but you- it's, it's like people who, remember when we spoke about, um, <laughs> I'm so balling with my spreadsheet today. You ready? <laughs> uh, well, it takes me a while to find yeah, the episode. Yeah, it's like we need Jeopardy music like, here. Dun, dun, yeah, because it's dun, like a dun, massive dun, list dun, that dun, I'm dun. Um, listening through. Uh, remember when we had the the episode, Should You Meet Your Heroes? Or yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. God, it's got so many episodes to read through. Yeah, yeah, the uh, Should You Meet Your Heroes. And basically we were saying like, yeah, you should. They're accessible. Jiu-Jitsu Jiu -jitsu superstars are not out of reach yet. So it's, you know, beneficial. Why not? Yeah, God, I don't know what episode it and is. If you, it's in there. It's in there. Look, I've got it on the spreadsheet, guys. I just don't want to read every title to find it. Anyway, uh, yeah, it's kind of like in in that episode, I don't get people who get starstruck. Mm. doesn't make sense to me, but cool. Yeah, so because jujitsu people are so accessible, someone like Craig teaches at his gym, he's a superstar, so – all it takes is you to pay a weekly membership fee and you can be face Robin to face shoulders, with that dude with ev him. every yeah. day, right? Yep. Uh, so yeah, you would get people like the same way that people do bizarre stuff like Justin Bieber's staying in a hotel because he's got some show in New York and people screaming girls yeah. are waiting out the front of the hotel for, for hours, hours and hours, and hours yeah. or days and days, like things that yeah. don't make sense. So that doesn't people, make sense to me. People go to that extreme so – you could see as well how how fanboys, if you will, would potentially move cities yeah. to, man, I'm friends with Craig Jones. It's like, yeah, cool. Maybe you do become good friends with him, but maybe also you're just like paying him money yeah. to attend his classes. And yeah, he's going to be friendly with you because he's a nice dude. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. It doesn't absolutely. mean you're, you're, you know, have you ever hung out outside of the gym or yeah. whatever? Like, so I guess – from, from that point of view, you can see why some people would move for a hobby. But, yeah, I don't get it. Mm. Yeah, like, yeah, but I don't understand people getting starstruck 
at all, right? I, mm. You know, don't get me wrong. If I see someone incredibly famous, I'm like, holy shit, that's blah, blah. You don't yeah. expect to see them in real in the flesh, but you kind of run up to them to say hello. Or- I saw Russell Crowe in an airport once. Did you? Yeah. Did you go up to him? No. He was, um, it was, fuck, this was years ago. I was in the Navy and I was, I was flying to Darwin with a, a person that I was um, in training with. Um, we're flying to Darwin and we saw Russell Crowe and he had his Rabbitohs get up and I, I'm pretty sure he was flying to a, a NRL, a football match right. um, in Melbourne or something like that. And, you know, I just saw him and like, oh, fuck, Russell Crowe. Yeah. Hey, bro. <laughs> I can't remember who's the most famous person I've like seen face to face or met. I mean, he's, probably, lot, he's probably the most famous I've actually seen. I mean, like, a lot of people in, of the, in, in the jiu-jitsu world, but if we ignore the jiu-jitsu world because of how accessible they are, I'm trying mm. to think. Um, Man, I haven't even met anyone in the jiu-jitsu world. Yeah, you got to get out more, bro. Yeah, most no. famous person I've met is JT. <laughs> <laughs> he's a rapper, did you know? Yeah. Uh, I saw Anderson Silva once. Oh, really? Uh, you know, and I've met like- Where'd the, you see Anderson Silva? We're in Brazil and we we're heading into a restaurant. And actually, we were leaving it, sorry. And I saw him walking towards it, not towards us, but towards the restaurant from ages away. And I was, and in my head, I was like, oh yeah, there's Anderson Silva. And I didn't really like, I was like, oh, cool. And like, as we got closer, you know, <laughs> my wife's like, so Anderson Silva? And like, we had just passed him. And I'm yeah. like, I'm like, yeah, it was. And then she's like, turns around, she's me like, oh my God, Anderson, Anderson, no Anderson. Way. Yeah. And he was like, and he like smiled and waved. And we, <laughs> and we, yes. kept, we kept walking. Yes and I was and like, I. oh God. <laughs> That's so awesome. I'd do the same. I was a massive fan of him. I was up. a huge fan of his. Huge fan. But then yeah. other guys, like I've met Verdum a bunch of times. I've trained with, got to roll mm. with like Lyoto Machida wow. and I don't, you know, like it's cool, yeah. but I'm like, yeah, whatever. Yeah, that's cool. But I don't think I've ever like, man, uh, I've never really come across a big superstar, like a musician mm. or a, or a actor or anything. Although yeah. actually once the gym that I first started training at uh, in, in Canada, there was this one class and during the class, there was this like other dude kind of, off to the side and he was doing the class, but also at the same time kind of doing a private because he came in with this purple belt came in and he came in with a black belt friend instructor of his. And then, so they were kind of doing their own thing during the class. They were part of the class, but not Mm. right. So this purple belt didn't roll with anyone else, but he was in the class. It was a bit weird, but I was like, Oh, whatever. I was a white belt. So I was like, "Eh, you know, I got nothing to do with that. Yeah. And then later found out that it was um, Maynard, the singer from Tool. Yeah. And uh, yeah, the the black belt that he came in with is like a guy that travels with him. So he has someone so to train cool. with and teach with. Uh, Tool so, is and, like by far my favorite band. Tool is a sick band. Yeah. One of the best live shows I've ever seen. Oh, I've never Tool seen them live. so good. Wow. Um, my favorite live shows, I'm not a big concert goer, but I've seen Tool. I saw Rage Against the Machine, which was freaking awesome because yeah. probably rage was the best that i saw because it was they had already split up as a band but they then so you know the i thought i'd never see them yeah but then they got back together for like a Come final back, tour or something to, uh, yeah and love that, that was sick yeah but yeah maynard's uh, a black belt now is he yeah he yeah, would be i mean yeah. this was like over a decade ago but he's someone that if if you know anything about tool you'll know that at most of their shows like maynard is usually positioned like behind the drummer. Like mm. he kind of takes the opposite stance where most bands like the vocalist is the front man. Mm. Of course, like he's the front man is in, he's the vocalist, mm. but he's not the dude who's center stage at their shows or anything. He's often never in the spotlight, even in their artwork and posters of the band. Like you almost never see like Maynard's face, you know, most mm. Like myself, there'll be heaps of tool listeners who would have no idea what he looks like. Mm. Obviously, big fans, like massive fans, probably know, but a lot of people. If you've would seen have the Joe Rogan experience, you would know what he looks like. Oh, you see, has he been on it? Oh, so he? many times. Yeah, yeah they're, right, they're well, good friends. Because it's like jujitsu. I've Joe's suddenly a big fan lost of tool. a lot of respect for Maynard. Oh, my God. <laughs> I thought you would have gained respect for Joe Rogan. No, fuck Joe Rogan. You're, you're <laughs> a glass half empty kind of guy, right? No, bro. <laughs> you, know, you, know, you know why it's half empty? Because I threw that glass in Joe Rogan's face. Mate, he would. He would oh, I was oh, about to say yeah, he would right. smash you. No, and then I was like, yeah, oh, right, yeah, bro. No. Yeah, fuck off, Joe Rogan. Get, 
I've got to be careful because like when you talk it to random like non martial art artists like just random people you'd be like joe would smash you but like talking yeah, to you i'm like joe would just, oh yeah, hang on. no you wouldn't. <laughs> probably yeah. not yeah <laughs> love you joe rogan love yeah. you half, anyway. <laughs> half of this podcast loves you joe rogan <laughs> half, yeah the 50 percent, the, the most important 50 yeah. percent. joe main rogan host. and his butt hurt after our satirical propaganda oh you know? yeah if any if no one caught the gruen projects uh joke against joe rogan was yeah. hilarious any joe rogan f- massive fans would know because he yeah. posted it on his instagram and he was, probably by the he time this airs it was bro. like two months ago but it was very funny it was i mean you i i liked it it yeah. was funny i mean if you don't know what we're talking about look on uh, joe's instagram it's like what he believed was an advertisement against him like basically taking the piss out of joe rogan or over the you know what which we're not going to say um but yeah have a look, scroll through, you'll find it, you'll know what we're talking about and you'll have a good chuckle. Yeah. Okay, so I had, uh, now this is the selfish part of the podcast, training, well, we've already sort of hashed it out, spoken about it, but more like, so when you're talking about uh, training, moving cities to train, even if you weren't going to move, right? Even if I, hypothetically, moving forward, um, if I wanted to pursue jujitsu, I wouldn't move cities from Sydney, Mm. but I would travel, right? I would go to like, you know, wherever. I had a couple couple questions around that. Firstly, where would you recommend, um, not just anyone, but in my position, being in Sydney, which this would apply to most people because it's, mm-hmm. you know, travel is international. Where would you recommend I go? For how long? At a time? And how often? Yeah, Obviously, right. logistics, reasonable logistics. I'm not bankrolled, but I could, I could go once or twice a year. Yeah. So, yeah, if we... Obviously, for each person, it will be different. You know, is it someone who needs to take time off work or mm. whatever? So let's just ignore all that because it's going to depend on the individual. That's not an issue. Yeah. <laughs> I'm unemployed. <laughs> <laughs> so in in Sydney specifically, uh, I don't know, just train with me, bro. But in Australia, there's probably three other gyms I would recommend, most of them being on the eastern side of the country. Absolute MMA in Melbourne, uh, Talis and Sawadi's gym up in Byron or Vicenci Cavalcanti's gym up on the Gold Coast, right? All three of those guys are incredibly talented and have proven to be incredibly good instructors, right? We also have, uh, you know, we've also got an alliance up in Brisbane. I've never, that's run by a guy called uh, Bruno Lemos. Uh, I've trained with him. I've never done any of his classes, but any students I know who have visited there, like it's a really good gym as well. So that's a bit further north. Where is that? Sorry. Up in Brisbane. In Brisbane. Right. Uh, But, you know, from- I love Brisbane. Just shout out to Brisbane. Do you? You're awesome, Sydney. I hate Brisbane. Oh, really? Fuck. I love it. I think my my opinion's a bit tainted though, because uh, I've got- you get bashed on the belly or something? <laughs> yeah. yeah, someone pushed me once. Yeah. <laughs> no, I've uh, I got cousins in Brisbane and growing up in Byron, we would have, I don't know, what Easter or Christmas or whatever. You know, one time our cousins would drive down from Brisbane down yep. to Byron to have it at our house and then the next one we would drive up to theirs, you know, when it's whatever, I can't remember, two, three-hour drive or whatever it is. Yeah. And I don't know, I just – found the whole experience. Like once I got past that age of not being five anymore and being like, yeah, I'm going to my cousin's house. We're yeah. swimming pool. And yeah. I just was like, man, uh, I don't want to. And, you know, I just, I think that just kind of tainted my experience. And Brisbane is like very hot. It's kind of, it is, yeah. it's like, particularly in summer. Yeah. In summer, Brisbane is kind of like, uh, you know, the like a wok that you use to make a stir fry. Yeah. That's br- the city of Brisbane. <laughs> it's just this big hot walk yeah it's, uh, and it, hole. yeah right, and, <laughs> you know it can be rather uncomfortable like yeah. if you don't i remember when we'd go up for christmas you know any of our in you know north american listeners obviously we're the opposite here in the southern hemisphere christmas is summer here and would go up and i mean they my cousins had a pool so it wasn't that bad but you know you'd be up there for christmas bro he's like so hot yeah like, this is the worst and so just that whole experience i'm like that eh, f brisbane that yeah. reminds me of a joke growing up like in primary school you know those dumb fucking jokes that every primary school for whatever reason every kid that age knew i don't know tell me one so it's it's along the same lines of being a whole it's like why do why do birds fly upside down over brisbane i've never heard this why because they don't want to shit in the hole <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> it doesn't make any sense at all. Never heard that. So it's like you, you just pick wherever, like the shit suburb or fucking city, wherever you're from. It's like, oh, why do birds fly upside down over X? You've replaced Brisbane with whatever. So but it dumb. also makes no sense because, so like, why is, would, don't don't you want to shit in a hole? Yeah, what the fuck? I don't get it. <laughs> it makes no I don't, sense. I don't get it. And there's like another one. It's like very similar. Why is there a fence around Brisbane so you don't fall in the hole? Yeah, right. It's, that makes more sense. Yeah. Then the birds. Oh, I don't get the birds. I'm probably fucking it up, but it's. That, that's I'm a I big fan it. of dad jokes. I, yeah. I like I like those silly dad jokes. Well, being know. a dad and all, yeah, yeah. Well, you know, and I think sometimes, you know, don't I like good offensive jokes too? But yeah. you know, not all jokes need to be super rude, yeah. or or make fun of someone else, yeah, yeah, to, yeah. to be funny. I like silly jokes like that. My dad used to tell one. Remember years ago, like mad cow disease? Yeah, I don't know. It might be still a thing in some parts of the world. I'm not. Yeah, really it's like sure. when cows eat cow, and yeah, they I get crazy, it, crazy brain disease, right? Caused by I, I, cannibalism. In I have no idea. Is it? Are you making a joke or I have no idea? I have idea. no idea. Yeah. <laughs> I'm making shit up. Uh, yeah, <laughs> Jamie, can you pull that up? <laughs> yeah, I have no idea what it's for. But my dad used to tell this joke. He'd say, "Oh, you know, uh, two cows are standing in a paddock, and one cow turns to the other cow and says, Bruh, you heard about this mad cow disease?'" And the other cow says, "Don't talk to me. I'm a helicopter." <laughs> <laughs> like, I mean, not all jokes need that's to be stu- like, you know. That's stupid. Yeah, I mean, but I like those stupid sort of, they're my, like innocent jokes and they're jokes that you can tell like, you know, your little niece or nephew yeah, yeah. or and something still like funny. that. It's you can tell a five-year-old and it's safe, safe yeah. right? Yeah. My dad used to tell one, um, it's like, why do firemen wear suspenders? Why? To keep their pants up. <laughs> yeah. It's so yeah. dumb. Yeah. It's like, well, where is that going? Or like, yeah. have you, there was like a phase. Have you heard the one like, why did why the kid fall off the bike? Is it like, because I pushed him? Because <laughs> he had no legs. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, there's, there's, there was a phase when I was uh, going through high school called anti-jokes where they were all the rage. I think it was like um, before memes were a real thing. It right. was like anti-jokes, right? And they, I think they, sort of started to trigger that meme culture. Yeah, anyone in their early 20s or under 20s probably doesn't know this, but we used to just have to memorize jokes. Yeah, yeah, there them. were no memes. Like yeah. I remember a time before memes. Memes, gifts, none of that existed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, so the, the joke um, was why did the plane crash? Why? Because the pilot was a loaf of bread. What? <laughs> exactly. It doesn't. It's an anti-joke, right? The, it, it, it appeals to younger minds, right? But the, the reason it's funny is because it's not. And it, yeah. it triggered yeah. like all of those anti jokes, and it became like a culture. And then, you know, I'm pretty sure that would have led to the meme culture because a lot of memes these days are anti jokes. Would this would another one I knew? I don't know if this would be considered an anti joke. What's big and yellow and doesn't fly? I don't know. A bulldozer. I don't know if that's an anti joke <laughs> or not. Like, it's just like a fact, I guess. That's stupid. Yeah. <laughs> I was thinking Big Bird. <laughs> oh yeah, from yeah. Sesame Street. Yeah. yeah. Anyway. So, like jokes, bro. We used so, to have a whole episode about jokes and it's just us sitting here being like, oh, I can't remember. Maybe it goes like, you know, oh, I forgot the punchline. It's just <laughs> that's like, terrible. Yeah. That would oh. be the worst episode on any podcast ever. <laughs> All right, listen to it. <laughs> <laughs> you 100% would. So back to, the, back to the point, you said that there's, you know, three gyms you'd recommend now, in Australia. Yeah, so Lockie. In, what, are we, what are we talking internationally though? Man, there's, there's so many good gyms and I think – you know, actually, sorry, before we go on to that, I do just want to say when I said I would strongly recommend, strongly discourage you from moving if jujitsu is just a hobby, that doesn't mean you can't change gyms, right? If you do jujitsu as a hobby, man, ch- like this, I don't want to go into it. I just want to quickly mention it. I've spoken heaps about how it's stupid, how people think that they owe something to their instructor or gyms that think they own the student. Mm. And if you train jujitsu as a hobby, feel free to train wherever you want to train. Right. It's your time. It's your money. Right. So you may not move cities to train, but like don't train somewhere you don't want to train. What if you, what if you moved cities or like the only, the only time I would say, yeah, I'll definitely move. Even if it was a hobby, if it was an important hobby to me and wherever I live didn't have jujitsu, there was no jujitsu gym for whatever reason. Right. Yeah. I mean, but that's also like, that's different case, right? Yeah. You know, you're moving because whatever city doesn't fit your lifestyle. Exactly. I mean, again, if we look yeah. at surfing, it's if you like- you were a big if, fan of the beach, yeah. Exactly. Yeah, well, you don't even have to be a surfer, but you're someone yeah. who's just like, man, I just need to be near the ocean yep. or something. You're if not you going to move to- the middle of Australia, like yeah, Alice Springs or some shit. Yeah, or you're not going to move to a landlocked state yep. or something. You yeah, know? 100%. Yeah, or anything, man. If you're someone massive into winter sports, you're not yep. going to live in 
bloody Sydney, you're going to yeah. somewhere. Unless where like you, you go down for like three months a year, whatever, but then yeah. you need the money. Um, yeah. That makes, that makes perfect sense. Yeah. But internationally, bro. Yeah. Where would you go? Where would you send me? So I think you first need to ask yourself, you know, at what point are you at, in your jujitsu journey and what are you wanting to get out of the trip? So sometimes it could be as simple as, oh man, I just need to, you know, train in a super competitive environment to prepare for whatever competition, mm. right? You could just go to any one of the top competition teams, Alliance in, in Sao Paulo, uh, Atos in San Diego, the B team, you know, Flow, New Wave Jiu-Jitsu, uh, yeah. you know, Marcelo Garcia's gym, Lucas Lepre's gym, like so many, uh, Daisy Fresh, there's so many different gyms you could go to where like the current, like competitors are training. The Mendez brothers, bloody Colabate winning the the East Coast trials recently yeah, at 15, 16 years old. Tear. Fucking crazy. He's on a tear, that that kid. So, you know, just go to any gym that has the current best. Again, with surfing, go wherever the current best swell is, right? Mm. If you're just needing that competitive environment. On top of like pushing that aside, then you gotta look at, well, what does what are you wanting to do with your jujitsu? So, you know, are you someone that let's say you're maybe already more advanced and you've kind of established your game, you're maybe you're a purple, brown, even black belt, right? Okay. Your, your game is very, you know, bearing bolo styled, whatever. Yeah, cool. You can go train with the Mendes brothers or, or go train at unity with, right. you know, or, uh, wherever the meows are based now, right. you know, or oh, your super leg lock style. Yeah. Go to Craig Jones, multi, you know, so many leg lock gyms yeah. or, or if you're over on to go find, um, uh, Bernardo, yeah, go train with Bernardo or Marcelo's gym where you got like Mateus Diniz and, you know, or Atos or Atos on yeah. Galvan, very good pressure passing, you know, yeah. Hulk trains there too. Mm. Kainan trains there. So, you know, it, it depends on where you are in your jujitsu journey as let's say like, where would I send you as, you know, as a white belt, it's like, or even, even as a, a blue belt, right. It's still early enough in your jujitsu that, yeah, we've been over the last six months developing a particular style for you because I think it fits your physique really well and it leans into your strengths, but it's not like you're, you can never change that. Right. So you're still early enough that you could go, train with Craig, right? And all of a sudden come back being like, dude, like this has just blown my mind. Man, I don't actually, it turns out I, what I thought I was enjoying, I'm not. This is my style now. Like you're mm. still early enough that you could change. So you're going to get benefit out of anywhere you go. But any of those gyms I mentioned at the moment would be the place that I would visit if I was going to do a, a, a training trip, right? I would go, I mean, obviously – it's a bit harder if you don't speak Portuguese to go to some of the that's the what I've been thinking Brazilian, about. Yeah, Brazilian gyms. Yeah, because you, when you went, you were like, okay, this this is where I'm going, and I mean, your wife's Portuguese, so or speaks Portuguese rather, um, so it made sense for you, right? It's yeah. it's like okay, it's not a it's it's a hurdle, but it's not a you know a. Uh, it a wasn't mountain. as difficult as it would be. Yeah, for, it's not a mountain to climb. People, like yeah. if I went for three months, I would. I think there would be a language barrier there that would be difficult for me. Yeah, I mean, to an extent. Yeah, to an extent. I mean, a, a, a lot of the the educated public in Brazil speak English, but yeah, mm. you know, even just the other stuff, you know, getting around or yeah, people don't speak yeah. English at the supermarket yeah. and, and all these other things that I guess it's the same when you travel to any non English speaking country. Yeah, uh, another Except thing Sweden. To, because everyone, oh, yeah. everyone except, except under in, forty speaks except in Europe because fucking English and they well enable educated. you, which I don't like. <laughs> so they will pretty much as soon as they hear me, like see me or whatever, they'll just automatically go straight to English. They won't even try in Swedish, yeah. Which is frustrating if you're trying to learn, yeah. Because they don't they enable you straight yeah, away. Yeah, I used to have people in the gym in Brazil who would do that and they would try speak English with me. Yeah. I'd be like, dude, your English is so dog shit. It's <laughs> way worse than my Portuguese. Like, <laughs> let's just speak Portuguese. Yeah. Yeah. That's funny. <laughs> but, uh, but they did it not as in a, Oh, Hey man, let me practice my English with you. They did it as in like, Oh man, I'll speak English with you because you don't speak Portuguese. I'm like, no, and, your and English your, is terrible. Your bro. Portuguese was like, better. That's yeah. funny. Yes. Um, now I lost my train of thought. So we're, we're basically we're saying like, you know, Brazil would be a hurdle uh, because of 
Portuguese, but oh, not yeah, really. Yeah. And then another thing to consider is, you know, at the moment you could kind of say Brazil is a bit more gi focused yes. and the US is more no gi focused. Yeah. You know, so that's something to consider as well. You know, are you leaning more into doing no gi or doing gi? Like, for example, they just had the BJJ Stars event down in Brazil. Uh, and, you know, like I've seen nothing, pretty much nothing from flow grappling on it. You know, yeah. yet you get one. I mean, if there was some ADC C trials on at the same time. But, you know, this was a big card with some solid names on it, you know, or, you know, gi fights. But then you get some blue belt no gi fight in the US and there's, you know, 12 different posts about it or, you know, so yeah. it, it, it doesn't get as much as much coverage. In but, their you defense, know, they're a bit more logistically, logistically, it would be more difficult for Flo to, you know, send That's a team true. down yeah, there. I and, didn't really think about that. And they might not have the media rights as well. Yeah, and you're right. And ADCC, yeah. Flow Grappling does have the ADCC um, media like, rights. Wait, 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 yeah, they've, they've, you know, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> for, for those that are listening, uh, watch the video version to see Adam's <laughs> gestures. <laughs> um, but I think you got the idea. Yeah, so that that's something that we need to consider uh, from Flo's perspective. They've invested a lot of money into ADCC. So if you have someone like Colabate that's, you know, is a blue belt, but on a tear, he's got a lot of attention. Yeah. So you got to look at attention and, and logistics. And, it's all about, you yeah. got to get those likes, bro. Yeah, yeah, straight up. It's where the money is, where yeah. the eyeballs are. But I, I, How- totally, I totally respect your point though. I think that if they were genuinely interested in covering, covering all aspects of jiu-jitsu in its entirety, they would have had a team there and they would yeah. be covering it yeah. and they should. I guess but- something I didn't – I actually – I feel like I should know this being – Oh my god! I was about to say being half Brazilian, which I'm not, right? <laughs> but I sometimes feel it because yeah. my wife's Brazil. My fam having a family yes. that is half Brazilian. Yes, uh, I feel like I should know this, but yeah, I'm not really up to date on what the travel restrictions are with Brazil and stuff. Right. So Australia, just recently, this being the end of 2021, has only recently enabled international travel mm. for vaccinated Australians. Without quarantine, you could internationally travel before, but it was a it was very difficult. You had fourteen to, day quarantine. On yeah, you had to do a fourteen day quarantine in a hotel. You often usually had to get like a, a lawyer to draft an exemption letter for you for why you needed to travel and all yeah. this sort of stuff. Now you can just travel essentially f- for holidays. Yeah, without quarantine if you're vaccinated. But I do believe it depends where you're going. I yeah, think some yeah, countries yeah, are, I don't know if blacklisted is the right word, but there's some countries that it's not just going to be, you can come and go. Yeah. So I don't know what. Ent- entry restrictions. And you got to th- consider the other, the country you're going to, what their entry restrictions yeah. are. Like and, and Sweden, so for all, Sweden's banned. Like, yeah, right. As you in, were saying. Yeah, yeah. So for all I know, like it's difficult to go between the US and Brazil at the moment. I yeah. have no idea. Um, so how long should you go for when if you're visiting a gym? Anything less than a week, I think is just like, you're not going to get that much out of it, right? That's kind of, uh, it's just a stopover, right? If you, I mean, a week's fine if you're, if it's domestic, right? So you could fly down to Melbourne, train with Lockie for a week or even, even less. Exactly. Right. It's an, it's a one, one and a half hour flight. You could even just go down to Melbourne for one or two days, right? And you're going to get a lot out of it. Mm. Okay. Cause it's, it's easy. But if you're traveling a bit further, you know, man, if you're traveling internationally, I reckon you've got to do like at least a month. Otherwise, it's not really worth the trip. By the time you get over your jet lag and stuff, you know, if you went just for a week. And flights, man. Yeah, the flights can chew out like a whole bunch of your day. Like when I went to a couple of years back, I went to Atlanta. And, man, you fly all the way from Sydney to L.A. And then from L.A. there was – was there one more stopover? I want to feel like I want to say Dallas. I stopped You're in like Dallas, twenty hours, and then to Atlanta. Travel. Like by the time I got there, man, it took a good two, three days. Mm. Like I was so jet lagged, mm. I, you know. And I remember trying to those first like two, three days of training. It's just like, yeah, oh man, I was so tired. A bit of know? trivia for you: flying west is actually a lot harder on your body than flying east for jet lag. It's easier. So from Australia. Whenever we're going to Europe or that's the states, the, that's because the the flat disc of the Earth spins clockwise like exactly. a record. 
Exactly. Yeah. But if you go underneath so you get it, dizzy. right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, right. Because, I mean, uh, uh, to do with the rotation of the earth, right? Well, Is that one? yeah, time zones. It's more, right, it's more right. about to do with time zones. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, there you go. Yeah, because it's always quite n- – the flight back from the US to Sydney is really easier. quite nice because yeah. uh, at least the way the, the main flight works now is you leave LA at like 10.30 at night. Mm. So you get on the plane and you, you, know, you ha- get to altitude, have your mm. dinner, and then you fall asleep because it's already like by that time, whatever, 11, midnight 11.30, midnight. Yeah. So you fall asleep anyway quite naturally on the plane. Mm. Let's say you sleep eight hours, you know, what is it? It's like a 14 hour flight or yeah, something. So, yeah. like, by the time, if you, by the time you wake up, you have half a day on the plane. You know, yeah, yeah. you only have like four, six hours on yeah. the plane. And then you land usually at like 6 30 in the morning. Yeah. So, you can still be a little jet lagged, but it's, you can almost go LA to Sydney and it's just like being on an overnight bus or exactly. something. It's actually yeah. quite a nice, Particularly I quite if you like sleep that flight. really well. Like, yeah. Yeah, 100%. 100%. Inception. You seen that movie? I have. It's a good movie. Yeah, that's, Everyone that's wants to know thing. if that little spinny top falls over or not yeah. at the end. Oh my God, I hope someone hasn't. Someone, no, oh, someone's sitting here like, no. no they, they just if, they haven't, if they haven't seen it, they wouldn't know what you're talking about anyway. So fuck yeah, up. that's true. Good. Um, good deal. Yeah, so I think less than less than a month, man, if you're, if you're having to travel a mm. bit of a distance, it's not, it's not really worth it. Yeah, right. Oh, I don't want to say it's not worth it. You can all, you could do one class and you we might could do like two two weeks right? or something. Like but, it doesn't have to be a stringent month, but yeah. Well, because like I said, uh, you know, earlier on, it's going to depend logistically. Do you only have one week off work, you mm. know, or and you've got the money and the means? Yeah, cool, man. Like go. But Send it. If you're trying to be a little bit more, you know, what's the best use of my time and the best bang, best for, bang buck, for buck, right? Yeah. Okay, cool. If you're just traveling domestically, Melbourne's an hour flight. Yeah, man. If you go for one or two days, awesome. You actually, mm. you're going to get heaps out of it. Would you, you know? recommend staying like going to another Alliance affiliate? Yeah, why not? I mean, but just because it's the- or Like prioritizing it rather? I should rephrase. Um, no. Like I, I you're putting me in a hard spot here, Kieran. <laughs> Really bringing the heat. Um, <laughs> like I'm just trying to think how I how I want to answer this. You know, like I'm about as close to Alliance as as I, one can get. Being a, a black belt from Fabio, owning an Alliance gym, previously being a, a manager for the, the the Alliance Association and and things like that. But I'm also and so is Fabio, by the way, very against this know oh you're from that team so you can't train at this gym like you know fabio's had uh seminars in his gym from guys from gracie baja and Mm. he's had the mendez brothers from well now they're out of jiu-jitsu but used to be atos and Mm. you know so he's not at all like you're from this team so we can't talk or anything right and yeah, so, so it it's, shouldn't really play a factor it shouldn't right like but yeah there are of course some alliance affiliates that are going to you know, stand out more. So you've obviously got Marcelo's gym, Cobrinha's gym, Lucas's gym, Bernardo's gym. Uh, you've got the Alliance in San Diego that is uh, where Felipe Andrew trains, is an incredibly good gym. Mm. Uh, you've got even the Alliance in Vancouver in Canada is where Thomas Lisboa is the head coach. And there's uh, some really, this one guy in particular, Brian, who is a black belt now. I think he was blue when we first met. Man, even a blue belt, that dude was a beast. Incredibly good training there too. So yeah, there's of course Alliance gyms that are super high level, but yeah, if you're in San Diego, should you go train at the Alliance there over the Atos there just because you're Alliance? Well, yes or no. Like, I mean, it doesn't really matter. They're both great gyms. So Mm. either or. Okay. Like if you're in New York, should you go to Marcelo's over going to unity, you know, like, or going to Henzo's gym and whatever, whatever you prefer, right? They're all good gyms, yeah, you know? If, if it doesn't bother you either way, then yeah, go to Alliance. You're already part of Alliance, you know? Okay. Otherwise, if you want to, if you're a big fanboy of, you know, Murilu, the coach at, at, at Unity, go to Unity. I, I'm, I don't think it should play a factor. Really being, you know, it's great to be part of a big team and everything, but it's just, a, you know, really only matters when you're representing that team on the competition mats, you know, the days of, not associating with people from other teams. They're just bullshit, bro. Yeah, got you. I don't like it. So what about if I'm just traveling for a holiday? So hypothetically, I'm going to Sweden for a month in December. 
what what are some tip, tips, tricks, best practices, how to navigate um, trying to do a drop in? Yeah, I think uh, it's it's a good question because there's things that I like to know when people visit my gym. Yeah, right? and I think things you know it's just easier if you already offer up that information. You know, I think you want to be clear about your intentions. And what I mean by that is, man, don't be a dick like trying to pretend you're going to sign up when you know you're just there for the day yeah. because you're then moving on to the next city or whatever. Like don't be a dick trying to be like, oh, I'm just trying out the gym to get a, a free class. Like not that the money's an issue, not that if that's ever happened to me or just whatever. wasting your time. I've looked back. Yeah, I mean it's wasting my time and your time. You then don't want to hear me trying to like tell you about you know, the membership options and all this shit when you were never going to join anyway. Just yeah. tell me you're doing a drop-in because you're passing through. Maybe I'm not even going to charge you anyway, Yeah. right? Each gym, it's their own business. Some might not charge you, some might, whatever. Just tell them your your intentions. Hey, man, like I'm, you know, I'm in Sweden for the next two weeks. Like, you know, do you have a like a, a two-week membership option or is there, you know, can I train for the next two weeks? Let them know what belt you are. That's always just nice, you know. So just to avoid any sort of awkward interactions. And then I think once you get into the class, it's always nice to to ask the instructor, oh, is there anything I need to know? And what I mean by that is different gyms will follow different rules, right? Like, you know, some gyms will tell you, be super strict on IBJJF rules as in, you know, oh, you're a purple belt, so you can't do any leg locks or whatever. You know, you can't do any knee bars or toe holds. Whereas other gyms like our gym, I let blue belts do that, right? So it's worth asking that question as well. You know, you don't want to be the dude who's rocked in being like, well, at my gym, it's like this. So I'm heel hooking this dude. Yeah, yeah, cool. You're not at your gym, bro. Mm. You're visiting someone else's gym. Like if you don't like their rules, go to a different gym. Or you'll get the mad enforcer. Yeah, I'll get the mad enforcer, you know. Uh, And... Yeah, I think they're the things when I have someone visit, I like to know. Man, if you're just dropping in, cool. Like, I want to know that. It's nice to know your belt, but I'll find out at some stage anyway. But it's just nice nice to know. And then, you know, it's good if they come forward and ask, oh, is there anything I need to know? Like, any rules I should be aware of? And every gym's different, man. Some gyms are super militant, strict and... Out of the photo of yeah, old man on the wall. Yeah, exactly right. Fucking Bow before you step on and off the mat. Can't talk to a, a senior belt unless they speak to you first. Yeah, all those sort <laughs> of like unwritten rules or whatever. Oh, but shit, son. every gym's different, right? Yeah. So you're just going to find that out as, yeah. as you go. But I think just be clear with with the owner or the receptionist or whatever and, and just make your intentions clear. And if they're a, a nice gym, they'll look after you, bro, and they'll let you train while you're there. You know, it's a business at the end of the day. Yeah. And one thing I want to want to add when I was sort of doing, because I did like a YouTube video on this ages ago, not like internationally, more just around my local area. Like, hey, visiting another gym, here's, a, here's some tips and tricks that mm. I, I learned from mm. asking whoever. And one thing that Jeremy Paul Skinner um, mentioned that is maybe a good idea, episode 31, if you want to listen to that. Um, we had him on the show. He, he said that a lot of gyms have – interesting like uniform rules for and regulations sure. yeah. so yeah play play it safe if you have a gi for example um it doesn't have to be like i've, I've seen this back and I forth would, on the it, internet right some some people say like don't go to a gym with a with your team's name on it like for example if i was yeah. visiting a gracie baja in sweden in stockholm and i rocked up in an alliance gi that's like a red flag putting a target on my back or something so if i have a plain gi do that and then i've had the opposite argument where people have said, if you don't show up with your team, what are you? What are you like? You um, embarrassed about your team? Like, why are you? Never why you represent that. your That's team? Like, stupid. you know, just yeah, dumb I, shit either way. I would, I would say, to to if you can, if you have a plain gi, mm. you know, like a non-team gi. I don't. If you have, <laughs> yeah, you don't. If you have one, like take take a plain non-team gi. It's yep. just it's just easier, right? Yeah. Because some gyms aren't going to care. Yeah. You know, but the gyms that do care, it's just easier if you don't. I mean, for example, if you went to Gracie Baja, it's they're not going to let you train in anything but a Gracie Baja gi anyway. So even if you rock up with a plain gi, they're going to either make you, they're either going to lend you a gi, they're going to make you hire a gi, or they're going to make you buy a gi. 
one of those three options. Otherwise, you do not even step on the mats in a Gracie Baja gym. That's how strict they are. Other gyms like, you know, you go to, to Atos, they only allow white geese. And I believe they only allow their white Atos team geese, right? So I think even if you add a plain white gi, it's going to be the similar thing as yeah. Gracie Baja. Or maybe not. Like I could be it's wrong, crazy. but I haven't seen any footage of anyone on their mats not yeah. in the Atos gi. But anyway, right? They only allow white geese. You know, other gyms aren't going to care. Like people come into my gym, especially if they're just visiting. Man, I don't care. Wear a Gracie Baja gi. Like I don't care. Yeah, it's right? a gi. It's a tool. Yeah, so it, it's going to depend on the gym, but it definitely makes it a little easier if you have a, a, a plain gi. Another thing that he mentioned is some gyms have a rule that you need to wear um, rash, rash guards guard underneath again, your gi. Yeah, some yeah. gyms have uh, So make sure that you bring one just in case. Yeah. And, I mean, and it takes it. up such little room in your in your bag. Yeah, so why if not? you can fit like, a rash guard in. And if you're going on a training trip anyway, you you're going to be taking no your no gi stuff with yeah, you anyway. 100%, yeah, 100%. So definitely throw a rashy in there. Yeah, yeah. And that's pretty much that's pretty much it. So the, the key things that I'm going to do slash um, I've learned is – Message them, you know, as, as much notice as you can. Ask if it's okay for you to do a drop in. As you said, make your intentions clear. I'm only going to be there for the day. Do you have a mat fee? Tell them your belt and where you're from and your experience, all that sort of stuff. And uh, when you do show up or before in that same conversation, you can ask about rules, regulations, like things yeah. that I need to know. And it's know. also for your interest as well. Yeah, because 100%. some gyms, for example, like don't let you roll until you're a blue belt. And yeah. if you've come from a gym that, let you roll from day one, you're probably not even going to want to go to that gym. Like I wouldn't you, go. You know, you'd be they like, said you can't roll, I would, I would fucking not go. Exactly right. Yeah. So it's also just for for your benefit, yeah. you know. What if you rock up, yeah, and you're like, oh, is there anything I need to know? And they tell you that like, well, well, as a white belt, you're not allowed to roll. And it turns out you only found that out like halfway through the class and after you handed over your money, you'll be like, well, this sucks. Yeah, what are we doing now? You know, <laughs> like I'm not bagging yeah. on that business model or gym model if that works for whoever. I cool, am. But, <laughs> but it's just better, in, you know, you, yeah. you'd look back and wish you had asked. Yeah, 100%. You know? So um, and yeah, so when you when you show up, um, you, you can ask rules or beforehand, preferably as we said, and make sure you're wearing a, a rash guard under your gi just in case. And if you can wear a plain gi, if not, just wear what you have and, and maybe you know ask them if it's okay or something like that. Don't be that dude who walks straight into the gym after like a 24 hour flight and you freaking reek because oh, you've been, man. dude, no. Take a shower yeah, first. Yeah, you got to tick the basics. Don't, Make sure you nail the cut. Don't, <laughs> yeah. You don't want to be a fuckhead. And another thing I would say is if you – I want your opinion on this, and this is something – I mean, I've only visited like a couple of gyms, right? Um, but one thing Where? that I – When? I didn't know about this. <laughs> <laughs> dates, times, names. Um, yeah, is is when you're rolling with someone brand new at a new gym, you're the, you're the outsider, like you're the random guy, um, I would – be careful to match their intention, match their intent, right? Like, yeah, I mean, I usually live by that. If you're, yeah, if you know you're stepping into like a competition environment, maybe not, right? yeah. But you have to be, you know, a, a, adjust your expectations. Like, you know, if you're a visitor stepping into a competition training at a gym, yeah, like they're it's gonna. On. They're probably going to bring it pretty hard. Yeah, particularly because you are an outsider. They want to like, yeah. Hey, bro. And I mean, and I went, I went through that. I mean, I used to do that when people yeah. would visit our competition training at Alliance. Man, I'd, you know, I'd be like yeah. showing, you know, like I'm, sh I'm a blue belt. I'm showing this purple belt that he's not on my level. Yeah, you know, dude, I do that like not, not like that, but um, because we're not necessarily have a competition class set up yet. Um, but if we have a visitor that's a blue belt. And you want to, yeah, yeah. I put it on. Yeah. Like, and that's okay because they're a blue belt. You know, if we had a visitor that's a white belt or a new person that I didn't know you that's a white yeah, belt. Because you're not a no. dick. And most the, of the honestly, time. I've thought about this the other day. Those are some of my least favorite roles. If if I'm rolling with someone, um, you know, that's brand, brand new and is heavier than me, I struggle with them because um I don't have enough skill to really eloquently you know, just deal, deal with, with like weight. deal with them yeah, super yeah. easily. Like I can still, don't get me wrong, I'm not saying I can't deal with them. I can, but I have to apply a little bit too much yeah. and I don't want to hurt them. So I let them just dominate me and it's frustrating because I'm like, I can't very eloquently 
all the time do a very nice flower sweep into a gentle yeah. armbar. But I've actually got a new mantra. I'm going to get it tattooed across my chest that just says, I don't roll with white belts. Nice. No. Nice. <laughs> yeah, you, you don't really like drilling with white belts yeah. either. <laughs> yeah. No. Or anything less than a purple belt. <laughs> but yeah, you got to be, you got to be, you know, if you know what class you're walking into, yeah. because it's, yeah, don't walk into a competition class and expect everyone to, I mean, expect them to treat you nicely like a human, but yeah. they're going to roll with you like it's a competition. Yeah. It's a competition class. Makes right? sense. Also, don't walk into a beginner's class. And then let's say it's maybe you're smashing. already a brown belt. <laughs> Don't walk into a beginner's class and beat the shit out of a bunch of white belts. You yeah. shouldn't do that in your own gym of yeah. someone else's gym. You shouldn't do that ever. Yeah. So I am, I am. There's so many things that for me, like I think. They're common sense, it, but they're exactly. not. Exactly. If I yeah. could have a list, I mean, I do have like a, a mat rules sign at the gym, but if I could just have one rule, it would be like common sense, like, or don't be a Karen or something, yeah. you know, like. But what's common sense for me is some things I find bizarre that aren't common sense for other people, but, you know. Yeah, it makes sense. I am training or planning to train at an MMA gym. That's about half an hour north of where I'm actually staying because I'm only in Stockholm for like three days, which is why I'm going to cherry pick probably one gym and just yep. go to. Yep. I'm looking at 10th Planet, Stockholm. Um, yep. And then when we go to where my girlfriend's parents live, it's like central Sweden. And there's just so happens to be an MMA gym. Is that, half an like, hour north. is that rural or it's oh, in yeah, the city? Yeah, it's or? rural. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah her, I think the MMA gym's in the city, the closest city, which is half an hour north. Right. And they do have jujitsu specifically on their timetable. So I'm going to get to I'm going to get there at least once. Like I'm trying yeah. to get there two two times a week, but you know, fingers crossed that I can make that happen. But I'm really interested to see the level of jujitsu from an MMA gym. Without sounding too arrogant, I don't think it's gonna be the same like i don't think oh yeah it's hard to say right i mean there's a mma gym near here that has jujitsu on their timetable but it's really not even jujitsu and any of the jujitsu they teach it's all like you know oh but if you did that and that you would get like punched in the head blah, yeah, blah, blah. So it's like okay it. this this should be labeled jujitsu for mma or yeah. it should be like even you know at best be labeled submission grappling or something because that, that would be not, a better label. If, if every yes. argument is like is saying oh but, but you're gonna you get, get yeah. hit here or, or you're gonna, or or you gonna get punched it's like well okay so it's not yeah. like they're different sports bro yeah you know? exactly so i'm very curious to see what the vibe is um and whether they teach that they're, they're probably not going to teach in english but that's fine um not that i know swedish but yeah i'm just really interested to see and i will definitely be reporting back like you know the experience there and and uh, everything like that. So it, it, I'm very grateful that that's you know, accessible, but um, <laughs> I come back and just start punching everyone. <laughs> yeah, I know, God. Yeah, yeah, definitely. No, so this, super keen on that. Yeah, keep keep an eye out for Kieran's new YouTube video. Yeah. Kieran, Kieran search for a new gym <laughs> after getting kicked out from punching everyone. Yeah, <laughs> cool. yeah. Hit the, hit the nerve. Thank All right, you, guys. Man. Well, uh, thanks for listening to episode 41, Moving Cities, uh, Training While Traveling. Next episode, episode 42, we are talking about whether you should focus on chokes or joint locks. Mm. Okay. And, you know, maybe we'll even have some more dumb jokes thrown in there, some anti-jokes in there. I wanted to think of one to finish this episode on, but I got nothing. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll just leave it at that. Wah, if, wah, wah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> wah, 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 wah. yeah, we need one of those. Right. Uh, but guys, if you want to support the show, we have our Instagram, Beyond Jiu Jitsu underscore podcast. We have our Patreon. Uh, we have all the episodes on Spotify, whatever's your li listening platform of choosing. All the support is greatly appreciated. But until next time, peace out.